Bill Burr is a cultural phenomenon. His name can be seen all across social media being praised and held in high regard by men who are willing to swear by him and love everything he says. In the current masculinity crisis, Bill's voice acts as an outlet for the inner voices of all men that have been crushed by the female-dominated society. Women are so overrated. And if you want to know why Bill can easily win the loyalty of men who are willing to go to war for him, then you're in the right place. I've found five great reasons why, and put them all in this video for you. I've also explained why I resonate with Bill so much at the end, so be sure to watch the entire video. Get so to a all these place years, 20 years, you work your way up to the front, and now still, they won't let you, uh... Yeah, now that fat guy's considered disabled because he can't stop eating cookies. <laughs> so he gets on. Look at everybody groaning. 90% of the world is starving to death. <laughs> that guy. <laughs> eat a salad and get on the treadmill like the rest of us. When Bill appears on a show, he always showcases his true perspective on things. How much football do you watch a week? I watch, I watch two games on Sunday, I tape three. Right. Then I watch the Monday game, and then Tuesday I watch one of the three that I taped, Wednesday I watch another one, then I watch the Thursday night game, and then Friday, I got to watch the Sunday night game. Then okay. Saturday, I watch college football. Okay. And it's fine. Okay. Because I have a simple male brain that could just sit there and just, just enjoy it. And whilst on stage, he opens up and discusses his personal experiences. I understand what that's like. I live this fucking isolated life, man. I go on the road, I'm in green rooms, and I just fucking, you know, I'm just by myself all the time. You slowly go fucking crazy. I did a gig recently, I was in Ireland, and I was in the green room by myself, and I went to turn on the light, it was one of those pull switches, and it wound up around itself, looked like a little noose, and I immediately just thought, what if I just stuck my head in there and just... <laughs> Bill knows how to give a comedic voice to the thoughts that most of us men have in private. There's just no way as a man to take a bath and not think about killing yourself. You know? <laughs> There's just something about slipping into that coffin-shaped thing. It's like, am I gonna slit my wrist? Am I testifying against the mob? What the fuck am I doing here? <laughs> I'm a man, I don't take a bath. You take a shower, hose it off, block out your feelings. Keep walking till you drop of a heart attack. Literally, as you're going down, are you okay? I'm fine, I'm fine! Bill transforms what can sometimes be a harsh reality into hysterical jokes. Buy something at Ikea, you get halfway through putting it together, you're like, dude, where the fuck is the fucking... Oh, there it is, there it is, there it is. Well, honey, I didn't see it. I didn't see it! Well, hey, you wanna put it together? You wanna... Well, then you put it together! You put together this fucking particle board piece of fucking shit! These instructions make no sense! I will buy another one. I will buy another one. I'll buy fucking five and smash four if I want to. You don't tell me what to do. Oh, go to your mothers. I don't give a shit. That is the first thing. Bill is able to relate to ordinary guys about struggles and topics most of us men go through. He is one of the biggest comedians in the world, yet if this is your first time listening to him, you would think he is just a funny guy explaining his life. He uses his wit to deliver a perspective that all men can understand and agree with in a slick way, especially when it comes to women. I have a temper, so that's the thing. That's what kind of ruins things. Everything else I do is fine, but I have a fucking temper and it just ruins shit. And then my wife always says the same thing. She's always just like, I just don't understand. Where did that come from? Where is that coming from? It's you just go from zero to a hundred in two seconds. It's like, first of all, I idle at 75 miles an hour. All right? So don't give me this zero to a hundred. I walked into this restaurant at 75. I could hear that guy talking too loud on his cell phone from the fucking parking lot. <laughs> When Bill opens up about his own relationship, not only is he often speaking facts, but he also brings his great female voice out. I don't understand, where is, where is this coming from? It actually hurts my feelings when she says that, you know? Because it makes me feel like she's not listening to me. It's like, honey, how many childhood stories do I have to tell you before you follow the breadcrumbs to the absolute lunatic that you married? It's funny to see that despite all the fame and success Bill has, he experiences a similar relationship dynamic to most men. But if Bill isn't talking about his love life, his jokes about women hit a whole new level. Every study they've ever done to determine who's smarter, men or women, every study comes back and says women are smarter. Every fucking one. Ladies, you shouldn't be applauding that. You know I'm an asshole. You know this isn't gonna end well. Did he say I'm pretty? Ah! It's actually quite ironic. 
Bill has a very good understanding of female nature for someone who is called a misogynist quite often. But I realize they don't want their own thing. They don't, they don't want their own shit. They, they want our shit. I don't know what it is. And it's, I think it's because we're happy. We're just sitting there enjoying ourselves, having a good time without them. It drives them nuts. And they just gotta go in there and ruin it. Even in his most recent SNL performance, he demonstrated this. All right, let's get to what you all wanna talk about. All right, ladies, you're 0 and 2 against this guy. Ladies, enough with the pantsuit. Okay, it's not working. Stop trying to have respect for yourselves. You don't win the office. Like on policy, you know? You gotta whore it up a little. Bill doesn't care what the scenario is or who the female is. If a woman does something to annoy him, he will let it be known to everyone at his next special. Uh, I'm sick of Obama's wife. First ladies, they've been out of line for a good 25, 30 years. They think for some reason that their husband has the job that now they should be chiming in like they know some shit, you know? Dude, if you had a leak at your house and you called the plumber and the plumber comes in and he starts fixing it, what would you do if five seconds later his wife, who isn't a plumber, comes walking in, well, I think we should run it over here. It's like, shut up. Bill never holds back. And at times, this can lead him to say some rather wild statements. It's just, it's, it's ridiculous. Like that believe women, it's like all of them. <laughs> how about, how about 85%, I'll give you 87%, all right? <laughs> But that last 13% that keys your car, lights your shit on fire, and puts a family pet in a, in a pot of stew? <laughs> Who put a pet in a pot of stew? Glenn Close. Oh, that's yes, yeah. 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 That's, yeah, okay, all right. That's what makes Bill's approach great. He can say things about women that most men can't without losing their job. And not only does Bill say this wild stuff about women, he makes it funny, too. But why do we all agree with him? Just every day, they, they, just, they just gotta come at you. They just wake up. They have an agenda, and so they're like these psycho robots that never run out of batteries, and every day they just keep fucking just keep coming at you. Right? In today's world, it's rare for a man to voice these polarizing takes on women, and this is exactly why it can be so refreshing to watch Bill share this. There's no physical ramifications for being an asshole when you're a woman. Do you know how much of a how much of a dick I would be if it was socially unacceptable to kick the shit out of me? See some big muscle bomb guy, hey, I go to fucking shit, slap his protein shake out of hey, go fuck yourself, right? But I can't do that, right? Every guy has a line, and if I cross the line, I get blasted in the face, totally acceptable, right? But with women, there's no line. They can just keep fucking, just keep coming at you. Bill will never hesitate to call out and explain what he sees wrong with women. I gotta admit, the only thing that freaks me out about Los Angeles is, uh, is all the plastic surgery. I don't get it. Why do people get plastic surgery, you know? Why can't you just admit it's over? <laughs> you know, you had your time. Stop trying to look fuckable in your 50s. It's weird. People with their faces yanked back, looking all shiny, right? Not to mention they haven't even figured it out. You know, why would you get a facelift? Can't you look at other facelifts and realize they haven't worked all the bugs out yet? We can all agree with him whilst knowing he will get away with saying this due to his great popularity and his ability to land his jokes. And one of you guys actually spotted this in another Bill Burr video of ours when Doy Schultz said, I like to call Burr's comedy style raise and release the tension. He just finds those hot button issues, forms a somewhat unexpected, nuanced take, and delivers that as a joke. It's beautiful to watch when everything lands. True master of the art of stand-up. Oprah brings out this guest, she gives her this huge intro. She's been on this, she's been on that, and she does the most difficult job on the planet. She's the mother. So immediately I look at my girlfriend, I'm like, really? Being a mom is the most difficult job on the planet? He knows he has increased the tension, so he deliberately pauses and gives the men in the crowd an extra moment to enjoy his initial statement, whilst leaving just enough time for the women to get angry. How many mothers died on ice road truckers last season? <laughs> Any moms get washed overboard on deadliest catch? I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but what would you rather have as a job? You want to scoop scallops off the bottom of the ocean, catching that lobster trap to the back of your head? Or do you want to hang in the sunshine with a couple of rugrats? 
He makes us see his logic and accept his wild statements without any disputes. But what fuels Bill's unique perspective and wild statements on women? Well, he's in a great relationship with two children and a wife, so it's unlikely his views are from his current life experiences. So there must have been a time earlier in his life when he learned all this. The layout, my brother was looking at half-eaten cube steaks and a little mound of green bean casserole. And he goes, so he looked at my mom, he goes, Mom, can I have a waffle? And she goes, no, you gotta finish your supper. He's like, well, after I finish my uh, supper, then can I have a waffle? She goes, no, that is your breakfast. And he goes, oh, mom, I hate you. And my dad, without looking up, took a full glass of milk and threw it in his face. <laughs> Bill's father sounds like a legend, and I'm sure if he was in the public eye today, we would love and appreciate him just the same. It was kind of funny. I just, we know it's hilarious, it was my mother just popped up and just immediately started cleaning up, and my dad just kept eating. Like, he didn't, like, <laughs> no, like, the roles were defined back then. Now, the guy has to throw the milk, he has to clean it up while telling his wife she's brave for just sitting there. What Bill saw growing up has clearly stuck with him. The way he saw his father lead the family and maintain a relationship with clearly defined gender roles resonated with him deeply. We all know how to get a free drink, okay? And I know, listen, I know a lot of ugly women, feminists, I mean, don't want to hear this message. But just tease him a little bit. Make a farmer feel like he's got a shot. Swing a state over a little bit. Bill's life before marriage and all the relationships in his earlier days have also shaped his opinions on female nature and what he likes and dislikes about them. Whilst I doubt Bill's father taught him this, I am sure that what Bill witnessed his father do whilst growing up influenced more than just his views on females. What do you think of parents now? How do you compare them to parents in the 70s? Oh, it's just completely, the kids have so much power. It's like ridiculous. Like half of these kids, I'm like, I look and I just have what happened to me. And I'm like looking at a kid and be like, this kid's about ready to get punted across the grocery store. And it just never happens. Right. They just, they just don't get hit. Bill's dad believed in traditional family values, which he passed on to Bill. He instilled strict discipline into Bill and his siblings that doesn't seem to be present in modern society. And then also you can't, you can't, tell other people's kids not to do stuff. Right. So you gotta kind of like be loudly like, hey, he's climbing up on the utility pole and kind of hope that somebody does something. <laughs> well, back in the day, you could yell at people's kids and I think that that needs to come back and that's what's holding back this country. Yeah. Yell at other people's kids. Go. No, it's good. At some point you gotta be, hey, get off. Hey, I said don't do that. And then you gotta be like, hey, look, you little shit. You know, that's my car. Yeah. Stop throwing rocks on it. Yeah, yeah. Before I throw you over the wall, you're not gonna do it, but you, you scare him a little bit. <laughs> I can definitely resonate with Bill here, as children nowadays can do whatever they want with no repercussions. Their parents will just come after you if you dare tell them off, or even worse, they'll try to call you a pedo. I'm sure one of you guys must have experienced this too, but another reason why I resonate with Bill and his traditional values is because of his mentality when it comes to work. I was just like, experienced like a ton of stress, man, burnt out. You know, I've been on the same tour for this hour for almost over a year now. Um, Dude, bands tour for like four years and then fucking go right back in the studio, make another one and keep going. You got to toughen up, man. Yeah, you're right, huh? You know? What do I do? You camouflage think? hat looking like a fucking backwoods guy, all tough and shit. You can't handle doing your hour again. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. Suck it up. We can all agree that if we got paid a quarter of what Theo Vaughn gets, we would be able to perform an hour of comedy seven days a week with no complaints or even thoughts about burnout. We all know men out there who work much harder for much less. And similar to how Bill raises then releases the tension to land some of his jokes about women, he gave Theo Vaughn a leg to stand on after a brief pause. No, but it's me? not bad if it, there's the other side too where you're getting run down and you don't listen to it and then you get sick. So there's always that. Well, work yourself to death, which I've seen a few people do in this business, literally died. Yeah. So there's definitely, you know, why well, you're in touch with your feelings. That's that's good. I'm sure it's not just me laughing at Bill's smirk as he mentions Theo being in touch with his feelings. Bill believes men should work hard with no complaints because we all have our own struggles. Dude, fucking substitute teacher, teach and be a fucking Uber driver. All right. And, you know, eat at home more. Starving artist. I slept on a futon until I was 36. I don't fucking regret any of it. Another time Bill displayed this great mentality in regard to work was when he was asked... Can women be funny? Yeah, of course. Some people have a hard time saying yes, though. There are a lot of angry young men on the internet that are like, oh, women can't, can't be 
just stop fun. it. Will you guys just fucking grow up and just sit down and write your own horse shit and come up with it? Start your own fucking show. Have your own award show. Quit waiting around for other people to do shit for you. That's the fucking problem. If you guys had your own big club and I was standing outside of it, you'd never fucking let me in. I'd start my own shit. You guys got to start your own shit. You got brains in there, right? Uh, I, yes, absolutely. So write your own shit and quit your fucking whining. We're all eating a giant shit sandwich out here. Nobody cares. I don't care. Absolutely, but I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a white person. The fuck up. It has no makes no difference whether you got a dick or a twat. All right? Just do what the fuck you want to do and hopefully people respond to it. But this fucking horseshit of quotas and all of this crap just become undeniable. Well, when was the last time you went on stage and you killed so hard the person after you bombed? If you're fucking doing that on a regular basis, people are going to notice regardless of what you have between your legs. All right? Thank you and God bless the United States of Canada. <laughs> I can't help but enjoy every moment of Bill's attitude towards working your way up. This great mindset in regards to having a relentless work ethic and becoming undeniable is probably why he is such a great comedian today. And Bill is correct. Nowadays, there are a lot of people who complain too much and want things handed to them on a plate. Bill recognizes this and calls it out just like when he sees modern day ideologies. What kind of a fucking idiot white person refers to themselves as woke? You know, if you, if you actually were socially conscious, you'd realize that white people stole that word from black people. Once again, doing the Elvis thing, right? But you know what? I blame black people for that. And of course, I can't forget to mention the fact that we all love it when Bill drops the odd conspiracy. Does anyone here any, have any suggestions on how to eliminate the pressures of the undesirables? <laughs> ah, yes, you. Number four. Well, you know, what, uh, what if we, like, slowly cooked him at the airport? You know? You know, just throwing it out there. Like, what if you had, like, a revolving door-looking thing? You made him take their shoes off, they got in, and they, they stood up like that. And you just radiate them from head to toe. Once on the way out, once on the way back. Oh, yes, yes. I like that. Bill is what I call a casual conspiracy theorist. He knows the whole system is BS and he calls it out, makes a joke about it, and stops there. I think the NBA was fixed and I oh, was- Oh, you did. I was right you that they can't. For some reason, the government gets involved. I don't know why. You can turn our fucking food supply into poison. That's fine. They don't get involved. But if, if you take steroids and hit too many home runs, all of a sudden, you know, or, or, or fucking Lance Armstrong, the Department of Justice gets involved in a fucking, about a bike race. A lot of other guys eventually go crazy about it, but Bill uses his comedic ability to make a weird, twisted conspiracy theory actually sound quite comical. What am I doing when the zombies come? Right? Start reading up on shit, get some powdered food, plant some zucchini, get a windmill, right? And that's all well and good, but if you don't know how to fight, all you're doing is gathering supplies for the toughest guy in the block. Bill brings humor to all aspects of what can be a silent, mundane life for us men, and as promised, here is my favorite trait about Bill Burr. Every white person likes to lie to themselves that they were alive, you know, 150 years ago, that they would have been working on the Underground Railroad trying to help slaves escape, right? I would have been one of the good white people. Good. I would have taken time out of my day, risked my life, and the reality is, is you'd be doing back then exactly what you're doing today. Nothing! Bill calls out everything he disagrees with in an instant, even if it's a normal thing. Then, did you watch the conventions? Republican convention? Uh, Democratic convention? No. I think if you watch those, you're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand why you would sit there wasting your time. They all say the same thing. They're all like, you know, over the last four years, Everything good that happened was because of us. And we would have done more good stuff if it wasn't for those guys. And then they could, the Democrats go, oh, we did all the good stuff. <laughs> it's like you're all working for the same guy. They've been on both horses, and then it just kind of goes. You know, it's not for you, right? You vote for that guy that says, like, there's a meteor headed right towards the planet. That's the guy you vote for. Go with the psycho, because there's no way there's any corporate money behind that guy, right? <laughs> like that guy is going to come on TV, 
He's going to come on TV, like, reading files from the Pentagon. Like, you know what else they're doing? Like, just freaking people out. And as unsettling as that is, at least you, you, can, you can believe in it. You can, you can trust it. If he dislikes anything, he will let it be known. Bill never holds back, and he will refuse to back down, even if he's up against an entire crowd in Philly. Face down there, you assholes. You probably won't even notice the difference. <laughs> that fucking pussy teams. Remember they had that whole season where they wore the slacks? You bunch of fits. So, in summary, thanks to Bill's father and his unique life experiences, Bill has grown to become a man that all men can love because of how relatable he is, his polarizing views on women, his traditional values when it comes to society and work ethic. Additionally, his unique take on conspiracy theories is great, but most importantly, his authenticity when it comes to calling out stuff he doesn't like is why men love Bill Burr. And to see another comedian or group of comedians that men love, then click here to watch.